Okay, so now I'm cutting the sides, and these sides are going to be 30 and 3 quarter on the long side. And so we're cutting the, the window sill, and I'll show you this when I, we put it together, but we're cutting the window sill at a 5 degree bevel. So basically, these sides are going to be 30 and 3 quarter on the long side. That measurement's arbitrary, but, and it doesn't really matter. Um, and if you see me taking these boards and putting them together and feeling the end and then trimming the bolt, the other end at the same time, that's to make sure they're exactly the same length. I mean, exactly. And so I'm going to cut this at this mark and it might be 30 and 3 quarter and 30 and 3 quarter and a 16th or a hair over or a hair under. That doesn't really matter so much. What matters is, is that they are exactly the same length. So when I cut these, you'll see me do that is I'll just make my mark and I'll line up my saw and I'll cut it and I won't worry about getting it right on that line but when I cut the other side I'll put them together and trim one end just to make sure they're exactly the same length whether it's over or under just a little bit it doesn't really matter as far as the opening because we're going to trim the actual barn windows to fit the opening each opening so that's basically why I'm doing that so we're going to set this to 5 degrees, lock it down, I've got my mark right here, I'm going to eyeball the saw blade, just sight down the blade, you'll see the mark, make sure I'm firm against the fence, and cut it. So now I've got this angle on this side. Okay, and in this case, you now I happen to be, you know, just a skosh under three quarter. Doesn't really matter. So now I need to make sure that when we're cutting these sides, this is a bevel cut. This is the outside. So when both of these are cut, you know, this bevel cut has to be at a certain angle, and this one does too. Well. You can see that say you are the outside of the window. The black side obviously has to face out. So I have to recut this at this side at a different angle and then I'll measure them both at the same time and cut them both at the same time. So now the black's facing out and my angle's going the right direction. So now I take this one and because they're opposite sides, as soon as I get them fitted together the right way here. right end on there. Just trying to trim the flat side with the beveled side. Okay, so now I just make sure this end is lined up exactly perfect. Slide this down, reset my saw back to zero, lock it in place. As long as that end is there, then I just line up my blade. And you got to line up the teeth on your blade, not, not the blade body but the actual carbide teeth because they stick out a little bit. You got to line that up with the end of your top board, which is your gauge board. Double check this. And I may have shaved just a skosh off this top board, doesn't matter. Now, these two boards are exactly the same length. And so I did the same thing with the top and the bottom boards for the, the top board of the window frame and the sill. Now all I have to do is just make sure they're lined up when I screw them together and the window frame will be perfectly square. Okay, so we'll see if we can't get this done without getting stung to death. I've got a giant hornet's nest forming up in the peak of my gable in there. I did not see that until I kind of set up to do this. So 
Hopefully we don't make him too angry. If I go running away like a small child, you'll see, understand what's going on here. So we'll try and get this done without getting stung. Um, so what we got going is, here's the window frame and here's the sill. Um, we had to resaw these down a little bit in thickness when I, I'm using a pre-made barn window for the windows for the barn. And you can get them at, at any lumber yard. They're kind of a pre-made standard pine window, single pane window, it's just a barn window. And they come in certain dimensions and when I measured the openings, I forgot that I was gonna have to put a bevel on the sill to pitch the water out and my mistake. So when you put that five degree bevel on there, actually I was gonna put a 14 on there or at least a seven. But we had to shave it down to five because I still think that will work. And I forgot to account for that when I built the rough openings for the windows. So we had to shave down the sills a little bit. They're more like an inch and a quarter thick now instead of inch and three quarter. Um, but they'll still probably be fine. So we had to resaw those down. I didn't film that because um, I realized I had that hornet's nest up there and I have to keep the garage door open to use the table saw to film to get good light. So I just resawed them real fast and, and got done. I also cut a five degree bevel on the back side and we'll touch this up with a torch once we get them installed. And we also put a relief cut on the bottom. Um, just a saw kerf and that breaks the water surface tension. So if you ever manufacture your own windowsill like this, don't forget that little relief cut or that saw kerf because when the water runs down, water surface tension is going to pull it back to the building and leak inside and that breaks that and makes the water drip off basically. So little tip for you there. So basically the sill and the top are cut at the exact same dimensions like we talked about over at the saw and so are the sides. I like to pre-drill these. Um, you don't necessarily probably have to, but I like to do that. It keeps them from getting split out. are repurposed screws so some of them might not be good. These screws came out of the forms I used to pour the foundation for the barn. crazy. Screw guns have a lot of power these days. I like to pre-build my window frames like this um, before I stick them in the opening just because when they're pre-built they I know that they're square um, and they'll fit. Some guys like to build them in the opening and you can do that. It's just not it's just not the way I like to do it. You don't have to get too western with these screws. On this bottom joint with this uh, bottom sill, we got some blacks or black rather. <clears throat> Latex silicone caulk that I'm going to stick in that joint. Just
just to make sure that that thing is watertight. So there you have it. So this frame, because all the sides are exactly the same dimension relative to one another, um, when we put it in the window opening, <clears throat> I mean it's it might be a little wobbly. So it's you know if you measure it now, it's not going to be exactly square because it moves. But when we put it in the opening, you can get it truly square because these two sides relative to each other are exactly the same dimension. So there's the window frame. Um, Pre-assembled, ready to go in the opening. Three more to go.
Hey everybody, welcome back. Say, so, listen, uh, I wanted to kind of get this closing in. Doesn't seem like it's going to quit raining. Um, we had a huge thunderstorm roll through, and as you can see behind me, the sun's shining with the rain. Always leads to some pretty rainbows up here. Thought I'd show you guys that. Um, but I got the windows in in the barn. Um, used that uh, Soshuji Bond cedar, and turned out pretty well. Not a lot. Uh, happened today on that project because I had to kind of beat the rain so I knew there was a big thunderstorm coming and I was right it it's been raining for like three hours just torrential downpours um, poor Zippy's been holed up in his shelter over there for the past three hours so but in any event um, looks like that's it for me today I don't think the rain's gonna let up but we do have some pretty scenery that's for sure so We'll keep plugging away on the barn. More to come after that, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.